It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. A lesson. Are y'all still here? Go back to lessons and re-examine your faith and feed your faith. Why? Because Jesus knew the day of Pentecost is coming. Come on, the book of Acts is coming. And if you don't deal with that right now, it's going to mess you up for the next 30 years of your life. Come on, it's going to limit you for the next 30 years of your life if you don't make this adjustment right now. I feel like slapping somebody right now. Listen, if you will dare to believe God, get rid of some unbelief. Come on now. And if Paul had to holler at somebody, unbelief is so detrimental. Limits what God can do. We were at Dad Hagen's meeting in St. Louis, and so I was sitting across the table from uh, Brother Copeland. Brother Copeland came to all those meetings in St. Louis. So we're eating after church, so I'm sitting there. I've been believing God, you know, to get us an airplane, a jet, you know. And so uh, I made a comment because I'm trying to learn about aviation from Brother Copeland. And right in the middle of my little comment, he had a butter knife in his hand. He pointed that butter knife right at me across the table. And he kind of started to give me a word, a prophecy. You know, he's give me a word. And he said, now, I heard the Lord say, I've been trying to get a jet to you for five years, and you hadn't been able to receive it. Now, if you get rid of that unbelief, your jet will come to you. I said, in front of my preacher friends at the table while we're eating, I'm starting to get indigestion right now. I wonder what God's been trying to get to you for five years and you hadn't been able to receive it. I said, all right, I'm making the adjustment right now. Lord, I believe, help me get rid of unbelief right now. Boy, not only the jet came, but then a bigger jet came. Go ahead and laugh for a minute, amen? Don't get mad, I didn't get yours. Now listen. Come on, what are you believing for that seems out of your reach? God wants to do that for you. God can walk and chew gum at the same time. I said, God wants to do that for you. If you will dare to believe and you can receive it, come on, get ready for the next 12 months. God's breaking you out into some new territory and new things are coming to pass, things you've never seen before. Him who draws back, come on, even in the area of finances, people draw back when it's time for them to sow their seed. Time to sow or stretch, and they pull back like, oh, oh, hey, they're counting all their money. Oh, I'm going to run out of money. Listen, many offerings I've grabbed a corn stalk, swung out over hell, and spit in the devil's eye. Right here in this, come on now, right here. One time I gave 25,000, that's the last I had in savings. And the devil was uh, tormenting me. Come on, anytime you're dealing with doubt, you know you're dealing with the devil. That's why dad, he said, I cast that spirit of doubt and fear out of you. Come on, so I'm just full of fear, you know, and doubt, and so I don't want to really sow my seed. I thought, well, I'll stay in my comfort zone. Instead, the Lord said, I want you to sow more of that. So I said, all right, I'll sow it. So I sowed every bit of it. Wow, after that, I thought, there better be a God. Come on. (laughs) Because the devil was tormenting me, intimidating me. Come on, saying, now you might go under. But when I grabbed that corn stalk, I said, devil, if you can sink me, let's get it going on right now. Come on, because I believe God. I'm following his prompting, and I'm going to sow my seed. 
So when I sold the 25,000, huh, the minister I gave it to, he started crying. I said, you should be crying. I should be the one crying. Anybody know what happened within two weeks? Absolutely nothing. Anybody? <laughs> but you know, the Lord helped us and we made it through. But within just a few short years, the Lord said, do you remember when you sold the 25,000? I said, I will never forget when I sold that 25,000. He said, I want you to count it up because that was $25 million ago. I thought I needed the 25,000. I really needed the 25 million. Come on now. But I kept on holding tight. I'm like, oh. In other words, the spirit of faith will cause you to do things that are unreasonable. Oh, well, let's try this out of I said the spirit of faith will cause you to do things that are unreasonable. You can't figure it out with your brain, your mind. But when you believe God, you act on the word of God. I'm, I'm going to come down there in just a second. Two kinds of unbelief. First kind is lack of knowledge. That's curable with the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. That means never underestimate the importance of the repetition of the word. Everybody say, the repetition of the word. Come on, that's where faith comes from. The second kind of unbelief is called, Dad Hagen called it, unpersuaded to act on the word. Unpersuaded to act on the word. Unpersuaded to act on the word. Two kinds. In other words, some people have lack of knowledge or lack of revelation knowledge, and that's curable. Is that curable? I mean, believe ignorance is curable. We really should believe that. Ignorance is curable. <laughs> Unpersuaded to act on the word, how many believe that's curable? What happens? That means you've got to take your faith and act on the word of God or act like the Bible is true. Listen close. The Lord said it to me very simply. He said the simplest definition of faith is to act on the word. He said the moment you act on the word, God makes himself responsible for your results. All right, let's try this out over here. Come on, I, I got to find out if there's any, any believers in some section here because I'm fixing to go talk to you. The moment you act, everybody say act. act. How would you act if you believe? Come on now. In other words, you got to go past, come on, just information, come on, and move. Act. Faith is an act. Come on, Hebrews chapter 10, by faith. One translation says, by an act of faith, 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 by an act of faith. Amen. How would you act? That's why sometimes you need somebody to help you. Release your faith. So an act of faith simply means your faith must move your mouth. Once it moves your mouth, it will move you. Once it moves you, it will move anything. So there's two kinds of unbelief. One is lack of knowledge. Two is unpersuaded to act, or Dad Hagen call it disobedience. All right, let's try that again. Unpersuaded to act or disobedience. Both kinds of unbelief are curable. Both kinds of unbelief are curable. How do you cure the first one? Saturation with the word. Come on, feeding on the word in that area. That's where faith comes from. The second kind of unbelief is what? Unpersuaded act. And that's curable. So if unbelief is curable, let's try that again. I said if unbelief is curable, nothing is incurable. 
I said, if unbelief is curable, nothing is incurable. I said, if unbelief is curable, nothing is incurable. Because if you can believe, all things are possible. Hallelujah. So everybody needs at least four crazy friends that will help you. Come on, because we've been through some tremendous fights of faith that look like fights for survival. While minister was singing about the blood, about the blood, about the blood, those words, God is on my side, for the blood has been applied. Every need shall be supplied. Nothing shall be denied. So I enter into rest. I know I'm blessed. I have passed the test. I will get God's best. Those words came out of a major fight. In other words, God will give you fighting words in the middle, come on now, of a difficult situation, and he'll say, now, say this, say this. Come on, release your faith. What you gonna say? Praise the Lord. Now, in my mama's case, because my dad and my mom pastored in a little town, 3,000 people, South Texas, called West Columbia, Texas. My dad and mom pastored there. That's where I grew up. (laughs) And uh, when they moved there, my dad had a heart attack. My mama had a nervous breakdown. I got my thumb cut off in a bicycle chain. It's still gone. I can only hitchhike that way. So I'm going to get to go that way. (laughs) Little kids ask me, what happened to your thumb? I say, I was picking my nose, a booger bit it off. So... Sometimes I say, people say, wow, God's using you to heal people and you're missing your thumb. I say, well, you're missing your brain, let him use you. So, so in the middle of their trouble, my dad was sick. Mom had a nervous breakdown. You say, for how long? My daddy said it lasted two years. Are y'all sure sometimes fights last longer than you're planning on them lasting? Come on, if you don't get the knockout in the first round, come on, hang around. You got some more rounds coming up here. So, my dad is sick. My mom, nervous breakdown, two years, depression. She wouldn't even hardly come out of the back bedroom. Different things happened when she was a child that just messed her up. And she was saved. She had even been filled with the Holy Spirit. They were even pastors. And my mom lived in depression. And about that time, here comes uh, somebody gave my dad a book on the authority of the believer when he got that book on the authority of the believer. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, have faith in God. Come on, whosoever say to this mountain, come on, have faith in God. Come on, he got a hold of that. And he took the word and he got my mama to start speaking the word. So he'd go back to the back bedroom. My mama's in torment, and he'd get my mama to say, God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. He'd say, say that again. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Say it again. But of power. Come on. And they'd go over the word. Everybody say, over it and over it. Come on, Dodie Osteen got healed of terminal cancer. Come on, what was it, 20, 30 years ago? But they say every morning she still gets up for two hours every morning and goes over the same healing scriptures that she went over when she got her healing. Come on, there's still a fight going on here. Woo, praise the Lord. So then my mama's favorite scripture, Psalm 27. So my daddy would take that back there. Say this, my mama's name, Velma. So my daddy would say, say this, Velma. And she's in there, my mind's messed up. And she would say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. (laughs) Come on now. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come on, when the wicked and my enemies, my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. The whole shit and camp against me. I will not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. And to, come on, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, Come on, you're fixing to come out of this trouble that you're in right now stronger than you've ever been. Come on, the devil's not just fighting you because of where you're at. He's fighting you because of where you're going. Come on, the devil knew if he could stop my mom and dad right then. Come on, pastor in a little tiny church, no money. Come on, they're, they're messed up. He tried to stop them right there because the next 50 years, Woo, come on. That little town of 3,000 people and my dad's church grew to over 2,000 people in a town of 3,000. Come on, sent 50 pastors and missionaries all over the world from a little town in Texas with one traffic light. Don't let the devil tell you you can't do what God says you can do. Come on, what God, come on, if you'll dare to dream and dare to believe God. So when my daddy would preach, you could tell he would get all fired up. That's why I like David Sharon preaching. You never know. He's like, he'd be walking along like this and he'd go, ah! And he'd go, nothing. <laughs> you need to get fired up. Come on, the Lord will light your candle. You need to get fired up a little bit. Woo! Come on, your best days are ahead of you. Your best miracles are ahead of you. So the devil's fighting you right here. Come on, he's fighting you right here. Come on, not just because of where you're at, but where you're on the way to and where you're going. So my mama's speaking the word. Woo! And I'm just a little kid kind of growing up in this situation. My mama came out of the back bedroom, came over that little church. My daddy preached, and when my daddy preached, there was only one traffic light in town. One traffic light in the whole town. And when he would preach, you could tell that attitude Everybody say attitude. attitude. Spirit of faith. And he preached and he'd point like this at the back. He said, I'm telling you, you can get anywhere in the world from that traffic light right there. We're like, so what does that mean? Come on, that means sometimes the devil tries to put limits on your life if you come from a small area and says, that's as far as you're ever going to go. But if you'll dare to believe God, you can get anywhere in the world from where you are right now if you'll dare to believe God. Come on, from where you are right now if you'll dare to believe God. stir yourself up again to believe God for things that look impossible. Come on, laugh at impossibility and believe God. I don't care if you're 17 or if you're 80, if you'll believe God. We are well able to possess the land. Ha-ha. <laughs> my mama probably running in heaven right now. But anyway, my mama came out of the back bedroom, came over into the church and a little tiny church and you could hear my mama because she was a praiser. She'd go, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and she'd praise in the Lord. Even if you thought nothing was happening. All right, let's try this out of her. I said, come on, even if you thought, well, this service ain't going nowhere, even if you thought nothing was happening, my mom would go, hallelujah, praise the Lord. 
Come on, something's about to happen right now. If you'll dare to believe God, even if you think nothing's happening, when you start lifting your voice, something is happening. Come on. <laughs> so my mama would release her faith. All right, let's try this out. I said, my mama would do what? Release her faith. <laughs> she would release her faith. Come on, how would you act if you believe that God is your God? How would you act if you believe the blood has washed away your sin? How would you act? Come on now, if you believe all of heaven is on your side. How would you act? Mama said, praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe God. Praise the Lord. Stand up on your feet. I'm about finished here. Now I'm going to come down there. Listen. And my mama, you see that guy running around here? Never make anybody run by themselves. Listen. My mama would praise the Lord, and then she'd go, Woo! Now listen. The way she would release her faith is she would take off running. That's her way to release her faith. She's praising and praising and praising. And then she'd go, woo, 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 I believe God. And then she'd start running around the church. She had a couple other designated runners that would run with her. You say, what does that run in mean? That means the Holy Ghost on the inside of you says, come on now, if you'll dare to believe, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. If you'll dare to believe, come on, Elijah just took off running like that while he was running. Come on, the rain started to come. Come on, some of you are just a little bit away from the rain falling on your house and the blessing of God landing on your life. If, if you'll dare, I said, if you'll dare, if you'll dare, Oh, I said, if you'll dare to believe, Lord. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministry, Faith for Every Nation. In Mark chapter 9, 23, Jesus says, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. The cure for unbelief is the teaching of the Word of God. The good news is when you hear the Word of God, your faith can grow and nothing is impossible. Nothing is incurable. Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's Word. Watch the mountains in your life move and overcome the challenges you're facing. Your confession of faith brings you into the consciousness of who you are in Christ. In this three CD set, Nothing is incurable. Mark Hankins has three messages that will strengthen your faith. How to appropriately receive God's word. Unbelief is curable. Restoration to fellowship. These three messages can also be downloaded on the Mark Hankins ministry app for free. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. There is a miracle in your mouth. For your offering of any amount, you will also receive Mark's book, The Spirit of Faith. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural. The Spirit of Faith takes the victim out of your voice and puts victory in your voice. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the Spirit of Faith learn who they are in Christ, and to be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your offering will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also help us serve as our new television studio. When you sow into someone's need, your needs are met. When you sow into someone's dream, your dreams will come to pass. For your gift of any amount, you will receive a three CD set, Nothing is Incurable, and the Spirit of Faith book. 
please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the teaching on the spirit of faith. We have a special treat for you. Our offer this week is my dad's book, The Spirit of Faith. If you have never read this book, you have got to go and get it right now. There have been times in my walk where I've been standing in faith for something and I thought, you know, I, I've got this, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm standing, I'm believing, I'm doing everything that I need to do. And then I have gotten this book back out after I've already read it. I get it back out and I'm like, oh my goodness. It just encourages you and gives you the strength and the fortitude to keep going, keep pressing and keep going, gaining the ground that God has for you. So I encourage you to go get this book. You can go to markhankins.org or you can call the number on the screen. Until next time, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.